Right over the bed, right over the bed. Nigga, I gotta be safe. Let's get to the sports talk. He's been asked, you know, what did you expect? He's like, no, I expected to yeah. be here. It wasn't like, you know, we're just super thankful that we had the opportunity. Like, he, I, he has infused such confidence to this football team. And the conversation starting today, or really starting on Saturday night, and then moving forward is, does anybody who's playing them, obviously it'll be Clemson, do they have any chance to slow down Joe Burrow in this offense? That'll be the question. I think that Clemson defensively can, but it would, this is what this matchup is going to be. This Joe Burrow is having the single greatest quarterback season ever in the history of college football, and he will be matched up against one of the single greatest college quarterbacks. That's all. It's all about can you pressure Joe Burrow? Because he's the definite maker for LSU offense. It's all can you put pressure on him? That's all. Can you penetrate? Can you be more physical than LSU? Can you get in there and swipe out the football? Can you get in there and wrap him up? Can you get that pressure on him? That's all. Prospects we've ever seen in Trevor Lawrence. So which quarterback do you want in this game, Rex? Obviously, I want the Clemson kid. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to say this. When I saw that Joe Burrow, this is really the, you know, the second time I've really seen him play. And he was absolutely phenomenal. When I, I mean, the accuracy, everything else, it, it, it's absolutely, I've never seen it before. Yeah. It, you know why? It's never happened before. But I will say this. Clemson's not just going to line up and think they can just go single high the whole game, play man-free the whole time with the safeties covering the slot receiver off at 12 yards. Are you kidding me? Oklahoma, oh, my goodness. By the way, Lincoln Riley, don't bring that dude to Dallas with you because there's no <laughs> chance to stop anybody with that defense. But I'm going to say this. That's going to be the difference. Brent Venables will be the difference in this game for well, the Clemson Tigers. The interesting difference, or just talking about the quarterbacks, the interesting thing is, I, I, we really haven't seen someone like Joe Burrow in this LSU offense. I mean, we really haven't. Just the, 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 their ability to do everything. They do have ability to do everything. Clemson, just don't let nothing get behind you. Because Oklahoma allowed everything to get behind them. And it was a long game for them. And you see the result that they had. When you let everything get behind you, I feel like Clemson got a good enough defense to slow them down. But if they get it going with the deep passes, it's going to be another long game for another team. I feel like this is going to be a good national championship game. It's all pressure, physical. Who's going to be physical with this game? That's what's going to come down to who's going to set the tone and be more physical than the other team. Short throw, long throw, crossing throw, big ball, everything. But we haven't seen this version of Trevor Lawrence before either. It's certainly not the case Saturday. We had never seen Trevor Lawrence play football when he was down and play football where there was some struggle. And then all of a sudden, as they built this comeback, put this football team on his back and have to mount this comeback against a very, very good Ohio State team and then make play after. And also getting beat up. Like, he was beat up in that game. So, like... Is showing his growth for Clemson. But also, you just cannot get off to a slow start like you did against Ohio State, against LSU. You got to come out fast. You got to keep the tempo. You got to go at them. You can't have them little slow. You can't come out the gate slow. You have to start fast. You gotta go back and forth with them, so it only come down to whoever had a bad had the football last. We we haven't seen a, which quarterback are you taking? Time. Which one are huh? you taking between Burrow and Lawrence? You already know that. Well, I yeah. do. Yeah. Not yeah. the people yeah. at home. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I'm telling. I'm taking Trevor Burrow. <laughs> oh, I'm taking Trevor Lawrence. Out. I'm taking Trevor Lawrence. All due respect to Joe, I'm taking Trevor Lawrence, the kid that is the best prospect we've seen since Andrew Luck, who proved so much to himself, to his team, in the country the other Saturday night. I got a ton of faith in him. There were a lot of plays in that game that didn't go our way, uh, and uh, very hard 
uh, to swallow right now um, and uh, going to have to really take a look at the film and figure out, um, you know, what really happened on some of those plays. Um, because in a game like this, where the margin for error is so tight. You stop scoring. That's one thing you can't do. Y'all good offense, but against Clemson, you can't stop scoring. You have to run up the scoreboard to be able to beat them. When he, once you slow down scoring, Clemson picked it up. They picked it up. And it's the last play of the game. It was just a mistake. Tiny. Um, you know, one play can alter the game. And, you know, <laughs> it didn't seem like we got, you know, any of those plays. Yeah, fuming. You see it silently, that anger. So does he have a right to be steaming? I mean, the, the overturn of the fumble. Listen. If you're an Ohio State fan, absolutely. And if you're a Clemson fan, you go, no, there's no way. You know, like, <laughs> that's just the truth of it. Now, when, when you see the catch, one, two, three, and ball pop out, if that's on the sideline and he gets one foot inbounds on the sideline and drags, that would be a completion. And just in the field of play, it's a different ruling. So this one is the dicey one. I think whatever fan base you support, you're going to lean towards whether it should have been ruled the fumble, return, or overturned. Yeah, I'm not a fan of either team. Uh... It was just a bang, bang play. He had it, then he lost contain. So the referees ain't know what to call. So they just call incomplete. But I had no problem with it, man. Are you kidding me? Exactly. But, but you know, but re exactly. realistically... You know, I've been over there, man, and, and I see Ryan Day. I, I mean, I get it, dude. He is, I mean, look, guys, he's not even looking at it. He had a piece of paper like, yeah. don't oh, yeah. kill somebody. You know, like, don't say that's something what he was saying. Like, like, that's the truth, man. Like, you need your money. That He got that message from his wife. The targeting right call there, right? was accurate, though. Yeah, it yeah. absolutely was. He the targeting call, you, you hit with the crown of the helmet and you have an indicator of a launch. Mm -hmm. That is accurate. This is the rule of college football. I know Greg McElroy put this up on Twitter of, of the actual book that we get as, as analysts so we know the rule. The rule and how it's written was implemented correctly. Now whether you agree with the rule and the verbiage of the rule, different conversation. This is a huge play in the game because Wade's a big time player but that was the accurate call. Well here's what I would say about Ohio State and I think we all walked away from this game saying well look this was an incredible matchup between these two teams. Rex you said this, you hadn't seen a lot of Ohio State this year watching them on that field. You saw a ton of NFL players and future NFL players. It was so back and forth. I think no matter how this thing ended, you were going to be frustrated either way. I mean, that's just a given. But for Ryan Day and what he did for this Ohio State team this year, Dan, everybody said, what are they going to be without Urban Meyer? Yeah. He brought this team right back into the college football playoff. And to me, they still look like a championship team. They, he is a championship king, team. They just cut their foot off their necks. When you had a stranglehold hold on when they started out slow, you got to keep going. You can't stop. Once you slow down against a team like that, that have a good offense as well, this was going to be the end result. You going home. It's unfortunate. Somebody's got to lose in these games. was more impressed with Ryan, and I was super impressed with Ryan Day going into it. Yeah. More impressed with Ryan Day after the game than I, I was before. Just how he handled it, his game planning, the way he, the emotion he had on the sideline, but yet the still focus of his football team. They're a player or two away from playing a national championship, right, yeah. right in his right. first year. So he is an absolute rock star of a head coach. Yeah, Hopefully he stays in college. We're so glad you're watching ESPN on YouTube for more sports and analysis. The best stuff in the shits in the safe. Got me a spot out the way.